Hi, I'm George Cow, and I'm honored to be here today with Octavia Brooks. She's one of my clients, and she, uh, I'll read you her bio, but uh, it's, let me just say hello first. Hi, Octavia. Hey, hello, everybody in George's community, and thank you so much, George, for this opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. So Octavia's going to be sharing with us some of the lessons she's learned in the journey of her business, and she's also going to teach us something from her expertise in melding spirituality and psychology. So it'll be quite interesting. So let me get started here with sharing her bio with you all so that you have a sense of uh, who she is and what she does. So Octavia Brooks is a shamanic energy healer, spirit medium, and success mentor. Her non-denominational style is playful, irreverent, and loving. Octavia's shamanic and personal development to toolkit has blossomed over 20, 20 or more years of research and working with folks. Um, her passion is to transform her clients' uh, painful emotions and release your capacities for inspiration, peace, and happiness so that you can live the life of your dreams. So wonderful to have you here, Octavia. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah. So let's start with sharing just a few, a few quick tips about what you've learned in growing your business since many of the, those who are watching here are are either working on growing their business or are thinking about it. So any, anything you want to share is great. Yeah, thank you. When I look back on the time that I've spent on this path, it's been quite a few years, when a couple of assumptions I made and, and things like that, that really, if I'd gone in and, and used a different approach and a different attitude, I think would have really helped me from the beginning. So I came from a lot of people enter into the entrepreneurial world from a corporate background, and I did too. I had 12 years of business experience before I started being an entrepreneur, and I thought it would be applicable. And I found that very little of what I had learned in the corporate world was applicable to online businesses and online marketing or even local in-person in -person marketing of events. And I really, um, I, I got a comeuppance about that. And, and the learning curves were just so intense for me. And I think the learning curves were even especially more intense because I thought I should already know this stuff. So I kind of, I kind of put myself down because how come you don't already know this? And so I want to share with people that please don't assume that anything you've done before being an entrepreneur is really all that helpful it could be and if it is fantastic that's awesome and and i really want to open people's minds to learning curves people get really overwhelmed very quickly by being an entrepreneur because there's so many different hats you wear and what's really important is to just be willing to continuously learn continuously learn, get quick at learning and get really receptive to learning and make learning a lifestyle that you love and enjoy. And as much as you can really embrace that, you're, you're going to, you're going to be in a lot better shape. Um, I want to, the first learning curve I recommend to people to learn is how to sell things to people, how to sell, <laughs> how to sell people what they want. It's very entrancing as an entrepreneur, like part of why we get into this is to really express ourselves. And so the really fun stuff is to create products and programs and curriculum that we teach and workshops. However, it's really no fun to do all of that work, even though it's a work of love. If there's, if you get crickets in your audience and you don't, like you're not making any sales, it gets a lot less fun. So please, uh, and my third tip is study marketing all the time. And the first thing you need to learn is how to connect with people and sell them something they want. And that's going to continuously serve you because as long as you learn that, you are going to be able to build revenue stream after revenue stream. And then once you've got bread and butter and you've got money flowing from those revenue streams, then you can get really creative and start doing more things now that you're attuned to your audience, you can really start expressing yourself. So studying marketing like constantly is the number one thing. And some of the other learning curves about finances and business management and productivity, like those will fall into place. I know they will fall into place for you. That's great, great advice. Thank you for saying that. Uh, I 
you know, have a, an MBA, you know, a, a master's in business administration. And it didn't help me in building my business either. That was, that's <laughs> yeah, something people right. think, well, I've got a corporate background or I've got, you know, a, an MBA or whatever. No, I mean, business degree, like I had to learn everything about entrepreneurship, like in the trenches. <laughs> You know? And like, that's kind of the stuff I'm teaching now is like the stuff I wish I learned in MBA or in business school or whatever, or even in corporate world. So anyway, so thank you. Thank you. That's so why I'm so glad I found you, George. I mean, I, I have been, I actually have gone through quite a few mentors and coaches in, um, in this journey as an entrepreneur. And I learned things. I learned some good things. And none of those people really understood marketing. And they didn't set me on the track and really get clear with me about where the rubber meets the road, which is this thing I just mentioned. How do you sell products that people want? Because that's what puts money in your pocket. And can I can I be a little complimentary of you now, George? You mind? Just just a little bit, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm really happy I found you. I'm just so happy I found you. I um, was on Ted Hardgrave's list and went to an event that you did together, and I was like. I finally found my guy. I took my, the first class I took with you is the Facebook marketing class. And immediately I could tell that what you were teaching is what I needed to learn and that you knew what you were doing and that you were a marketing master, master that I'd been looking for because like, I, you know, now you know what my value system is marketing, marketing, marketing. If you only conquer one learning curve ever, marketing <laughs> yeah and and by the way tad is, is an amazing guy i learned a lot from him too and he's he's great everyone should check him out marketing yeah absolutely and and i think it's people like tad and i you know we bring we try to our best to bring our our hearts into marketing too you know and that's what is often missing out there totally. is kind of like a mercenary type of marketing totally. um, which actually unfortunately works in the short term but doesn't work in the long term, which I've experienced myself. I had to start it over a couple of years ago because I was didn't there. work for me at all ever. <laughs> yeah, and because so I live in I lived in Austin, Texas for a long time. It's a huge entrepreneurial community there, and I fell in with a group called the Internet Marketing Party, David Gonzalez, and I have a lot of respect for him and the connections and that that entire world is really it's exciting and it's entrancing and it's all about. Um, using high volume sales techniques, maybe even on low price points and lots of really um, big player moves, if you will. So I had a lot of exposure to this really high energy internet marketing that's, um, well, okay, so frankly, just not authentic and didn't connect me to my, and I think David would agree, and I, I really adore David, I, but I think you would agree with me on this. It's really hard to take those tactics that I had a lot of exposure to because I kept going to meetings and taking these classes to a spiritual business. And, and I'm, I'm really having to unlearn a lot of the marketing that I did take and did train in because, George, I have so much admiration. When I read your material or I read emails and the email templates that you provide us in the classes, I'm like, this guy is just coming from such a pure place and like why am I not already coming from a pure that's who I am inside I just wasn't I didn't really have the language to connect my heart in my copy and in my writings and, and things like that and you've given me more courage and confidence to uh, to tell my stories some of my stories aren't really fun and happy times but they're instructive and they're helpful for people and it's where i learned a lot and when you're vulnerable with people people really connect with you better and they connect with your story so i've gotten a lot of a lot more permission and confidence since working with you on on that level of connection that deeper level of connection thank you i really really appreciate that yeah and I just want to say, you know, your writings are already great. I mean, Thank you're you. thankful. I mean, a lot of people are still learning how to write and how to communicate their, their experience and their wisdom. But you're, I mean, I'm sure you've worked at it for a long time, but you're, yeah. So keep going, keep doing what you're doing. And because I think just in, if enough, once enough people see it, it's, it's going to be, you know, even more amazing. Oh, I appreciate um, anyway, it. 
let's get into your, yeah, I mean, just, we only get a slice of, of, a bit of your wisdom, but what does this mean to talk, tell us about this whole spirituality psychology, what does that mean for you and kind of divine guidance, et cetera? You know? So I've been on my spiritual path for a, a really long time. You know, I don't really tell people how many years, but I just say over 20 <laughs> because I'm, <laughs> I'm a little older than I look and I like to keep it that way. Um, I, and I, so I have a lot of spiritual tools and techniques and I really believe in using energy healing to, uh, to attune ourselves to the life we want. And, and then about two and a half years ago, I started in this, it's like a, let's just call it success training because there's a lot of schools. People have heard of Landmark and Psy and, and all these Land Spring is another one. There's a lot of different schools in this. And I'm studying with another teacher, Mary Morrissey. And in the, around the beginning of the 19th century, like 1900, 1920, 1930, there were a bunch of people, a lot of mostly men, but thinking about how does success happen? And Napoleon Hill is one of those super famous guys who wrote um, Think and Grow Rich. And he talked to Carnegie and he talked to like 500 really super successful people. And they have... And he did all this analysis over like 20 years. It came up with these practices of thinking, so the way you use your mind that will facilitate your ability to get what you want in life. And now that I understand that, it's, it's put a, a lot more into perspective for me in terms of my duration of time and being successful and all these different things. So what I want to share with people today is – the spiritual, psychological, first I'm going to talk about psychological and I'm going to talk about spiritual a little bit because, well, let me go back and forth. First, I want to say that we are here to express, like in this plane, our spiritual purpose is to express ourselves as much as we possibly can. And, and a lot of us think that that's a, a pure divine expressance. A, expressance. That's a new word. I'm going to keep that one. Um, we're going to have the divine come through us and then we're going to be able to express our essence. And when we find our true purpose in life and we try and find our, our passion that we really, really want to live, you know, and some people have a passion for organizing closets. Some people have a passion for creating, you know, new vaccines or whatever your passion is, whatever you really want to do. As much as you can say yes to that, that is your personal flavor of the divine coming into this world. And what happens is in childhood, I'm going to switch to the psychology side. In childhood, in our human experience, we start taking any little thing that's going wrong in our environment, we take it really personally. And it's just how our human psychology is. We assume that anything ever in the whole entire face of the world that ever went wrong is our fault. And then we make up a whole lot of meaning around that. And we say, well, if because I'm a total screw up and fuck up because I, you know, uh, because I haven't been able to get what I want from my parents and I've tried everything, then there's something wrong with me. I'm tragically flawed and therefore I don't deserve. And we have this worthiness thing. So, and, and there's lots of other, they call them programs, lots of other messages that we send to ourselves that tell us why we should not have our this ability to express our essence and express our passion in life. And so a lot of us fall away from that and we fall into like I, I went to UC Berkeley, which is an awesome school, and I like followed the track. I went to a corporate job. I made my parents happy. I bought a house. I got married. I did all that stuff that's supposed to make you really happy. And, and I looked around, but I wasn't, I wasn't happy. And I realized that the corporate job was really a tight structure for me, that I wasn't able to be creative, that I wasn't happy in my marriage, that the, the house itself felt like too much responsibility for me. And, and I got to this point where I, like, I really hadn't even, I, I didn't even know what my passions were. They were so deeply buried. I had to unearth them under, from out, um, out from under all of that unworthiness. So if it, I think in entrepreneurs, when we take this path, when we choose this path, when we take steps towards our passion, 
And there's a great um, Thoreau quote about moving boldly forward confidently in the direction of our dreams. Then all of these programs from childhood, it feels like we have bricks being thrown in our face as we try to walk our path. And, and it's so challenging. So I, I wanted to mention about the psychology and I also want to mention a, a role that the ego plays. So whenever we take steps confidently in the direction of our dream and we really want to achieve something, we, our ego is really protective. This is like caveman wiring. It's really protective of those beliefs that we got in childhood. So if we believe that we don't deserve something and then we go and try to have something that's bigger than we than our subconscious thinks that we deserve, because our conscious, you know, like we can pretty much consciously think, I do deserve to have my path, but subconsciously we don't. And then when the ego comes in and it's really mean and ferocious about protecting those old programs. And like I said, this served a, 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 pro, a, served a purpose of protecting us when we were in caveman days. We had to know like in our field of vision is anything moving that's got big long teeth and it's gonna kill me. And then we lump all this stuff of like any type of movement makes us afraid. That's, that's still in there in our brains. We haven't evolved all the way out of that yet. So when we advance confidently in the direction of our dreams, we, we run into these major fears that hold us back and that stop us. Here's where spiritual tools and techniques can really come in handy. Staying connected to your divine essence, staying connected to source, however you define that for yourself, staying connected to your heart, and, and creating a strength in your center and a strength in the middle of your mind so that when your ego throws these nasty, mean things, it says to you, like, you shouldn't do that, you don't deserve that, and, and worse, mean, terrible things our ego says to us when we try to take these steps, our spiritual center is what gives us the confidence and the strength to overcome that and just part the way so that every single day, and I recommend everybody take one step a day, one action a day, towards the dream of your life and really know that these fears are going to come up, know where they come from and don't let anything stop you. That's the most important thing. Don't let anything stop you. Anybody, no matter what anybody says, no matter what, what experiences you have, let nothing stop you from expressing your purpose and expressing your piece of the divine. So that's really what I wanted to share today. I really wanted to encourage people to stay on their path and, and stay true to what they know is right for them to be doing and, and don't let anything stop you. Know that there are going to be crazy major things that are going to try to stop you. And when you go through those, you'll find yourself supported and magic happens and you get opportunities and you get to level up and take quantum leaps and that's out there too. And you get to have that too once you overcome these fears and move forward. So George, thank you so much for letting me share that today. I really, that's a passion of mine. If you can't tell, like I'm flailing my arms around. <laughs> it's a passion for me to know, uh, for people to know about this stuff. That was great. That was really, really good. Um, and it's just a taste of the kind of work that you do with people. You have an upcoming, I mean, we are recording this at the end of, uh, towards the end of the year, and you have an upcoming New Year's kickoff program. Can you tell us a bit about that? Oh, thank you, George. I'd be happy to. Well, so I, you know, a lot of people offer really valuable programs for, for the New Year's and everybody's got to find the right one for them. So mine's different than all that other stuff because I combine shamanic practices with the success psychology. I'm not going to be doing like project plans and vision boards. <laughs> I, I, I think those really work for people. I think they're great. They, they don't work for me personally. We're going to first do a ceremonial cleansing of whatever occurred for us in 2018, because we all have beliefs and stories about the good and the bad and the ugly. We're going to get to a blank slate. And then we're going to really let ourselves dream about what we want in 2019. We're going to dream big. We're going to go for that really expansive vision of what we like what in our wildest dreams. Could we possibly 
have, see happen for us in 2019. And then we're going to go through an initiation process to become the person who can receive that. So that's a big leveling up for a lot of people. For dreaming really big, we might not believe we can, we're big, our britches are big enough for us to have that dream. So we'll go through an initiation that, that teaches you. And initiations and ceremony work on the subconscious level. They work on the mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual levels. And on the mental level, they work on the conscious and the subconscious. So you can bring all of this into alignment. And we're, then we're going to go and do a shamanic journey to get all the tools and all the pieces and all the resources we need. So we're going to be who we need to be and we're going to have the resources we need to be to just like jam out on 2019. So that's the program offering in, in January. And the best way to, to let me know if you're interested is pop me a note through my website. That is awesome. That sounds amazing. Uh, the website is octaviabrooks.com, O-C-T-A-V-I-A-B-R-O-O-K-S, octaviabrooks.com. Of course, I'll have the link in the notes of the video as well. Octavia, thank you so much for the work you do uh, and for being here and doing this video. Is there anything else you want to say as, as we part ways uh, in any last little bits of inspiration or wisdom for, for our audience? Study with George. <laughs> <laughs> George is your man. I really, um, I didn't even get to say all the stuff I wanted to say, George, about how um, I feel like I'm set on the track now with yeah. my business and, and what I'm here to do. So I just, I, I really, really appreciate this opportunity to study with you and to do this interview with you and to connect with your people. It's really meaningful for me. I really appreciate it. Mm, thanks, Octavia. And if you have, those of you watching this, if you've, if you've been inspired by Octavius Energy, and um, I think you can learn a lot from her in terms of um, resolving sort of the, the, the challenges that, that come up. The greatest challenges we have really in business are ourselves. <laughs> I mean, that's what I've learned again and again, what I've seen in many clients. So if, you, if you've appreciated Octavius Energy, contact her, join her um, New Year's kickoff. I think that'll be a great experience. And... Um, until the next video, I wish you well. Thanks, Octavia. Thank you. Have an awesome day. Thanks.